Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome back to WoW Classic Vanilla, the server of Bloodsail Buccaneers, and our Hardcore Priest run. Thank you guys for clicking on the video and joining me here today, I really do appreciate it. And I hope you're all doing well. We are going to start off heading to the north here, we have to finish up Ergil's Folly. We need Dark Soul Shackles and Glutton Shackles. Uh, after that, we will probably go down and do border crossing. We need to find one of the Dalaran Wizard's crates. It's going to be north of Pyrewood Village, that one. Let's get Inner Fire up. And we'll keep an eye out for the Son of Aragol. Some of you guys said that I got precariously close to him and didn't notice the other day. And, uh, no, I, I saw him a couple of times, but I guess the time you guys were talking about, I didn't see him. I'll try to be more careful today. I have to remind myself that we can skin Worgen in vanilla. Because they're not yet a playable race. Yeah, see, this could have been a son of Aragal. All the dark soul shackles we need now we need glutton shackles maybe i can pull this guy out on his own I, yeah we can we might even be able to get the next one if we can move quickly enough here uh we're gonna get two we're gonna get this guy right here i didn't see oh we didn't get two that's you know what that's amazing and i'll take it Alright, let's not forget to skin these guys. For some reason, guys, it's really easy for me to forget to skin these. Let's fight our way out of this little camp. There's lots of Dark Souls left around, but we don't need those anymore. We need to find some Gluttons. Which we're not going to do over here. There is a Son of Aragal. He's a little bit bigger, he's a little bit darker in the fur. Other than that, he, he looks very, very similar, and he has quite a wide path that he roams, and I don't know if maybe there aren't multiple of them. 
I don't know if there's any restriction that says there's only one up at a time. These gluttons do not want to drop their shackles. We have two out of six, and we've had two out of six for a little while. I don't even know that I really want to go that way, considering. Unfortunately, a lot of the guys we need are in that direction, so... Let's work our way over here, maybe along this cliff face, and then come down a little bit. Okay, that was, uh, scary... Scary. Scary times. <laughs> I don't like that. Thought I was being pretty careful there. But apparently not. There we go, there's three out of six. Yeah, there he is back there. Pretty sure that's the same one. Oh, something I noticed that I, I don't really know how to address it, but I feel like not addressing it would be a mistake. So I'll just talk about it instead. Uh, I noticed, and a couple of you guys noticed, that people had left comments on, I think it was episode 12, kind of jokingly indicating that the character had died. You know, like messages like rip, good run, stuff like that. I don't... Here's the thing, I never assume negative intent on people. I try to think of, like, what could be the positive intent. I don't think there's necessarily a positive intent. I think people just think that that kind of trolling is funny. What I will say is this. If you troll in my comments of that, that kind of stuff, like, I'm probably just going to hide you from the channel or remove it, to be honest. So, yeah, I just because I just don't see the point of it. So it makes people think that the character died. That's fine, then they go to the end of the video maybe, or they find out that the character didn't die. I just, I tried to find a positive intent in it that wasn't just trolling, and I, I couldn't see one. So I, I will be removing a, any comments like that that I see, obviously, going forward. Just so you guys know, that's my plan. In fact, like, I know it's a lot to ask. And I'm not going to enforce this part of it, but I, I would appreciate on like videos where a character does die that it not be ruined in the comments for people. I don't want to go in and have to like manage the comment section. I don't want to have to go in and hide or remove comments that relate to the character death. What I would say is like, if you, if you want to talk about the character death in the comments or how the character died, 
give it time and give the video 24 hours to be up. Don't don't try not to ruin it for anybody. People are usually going to be looking at the end of the video if it's a shorter video anyway or something like that. But I, I would appreciate not as many spoilers in the comments in, in the first little while after the video goes live. I'm not going to enforce it right now. I'm just going to ask nicely. <laughs> and, and we'll kind of go from there. In the future, what I'd like to do is I I'd like to set up a hardcore room in my Discord and get that link out there to you guys who really want to be more interactive with me or with the hardcore in general. You guys can hang out in there and swap stories and talk about the character deaths and stuff like that in the Discord would be a, a better place to go back and forth about conversation like that necessarily than in the comments. So that is something I'll be looking to do in the future, just creating a little hardcore room in our Discord and sharing that link out to you guys. Because I think that would be really cool. I think that's a cool place to talk about like how the character died, what we could have done differently, uh, what we might do differently on other characters. I'd like it'd be a cool place for you guys to talk about your own journeys and how like you have met your untimely ends and just tips for people who are trying to level up and succeed in the hardcore. That would be cool. All right, we are done here with this one. Uh, we could we could hearth back. I'm tempted to. We're gonna do border crossing. Let's just go ahead and uh, we'll run it back. We'll try to avoid aggroing a son of Aragol as we do this. Probably have to fight a little bit as we go here. We're going to have to head to the road, I think. I don't think there's like a really good way for us to cut through the mountainside or anything. Uh, so with that in mind... With that in mind, we, ha we have to do some fighting. That was a pretty big resist here by this guy. And there is level 18, very nice. Let's put another point into wands, we're up to 20% bonus damage. Oh, look at that, a random chest. And a random guy leashing back to his spawn point. That was a little bit scary. Some light leather in there. If you didn't have leather, if you didn't have skinning and you wanted to be a tailor, checking those chests and, and storing any light leather you find for later would be really useful. So there are a few patterns that require us to have a handful of leather. Uh, I feel like we're about to stumble onto a camp back here, so I'm going to try to go around. Ultimately, we are kind of heading in the wrong direction to get back to town, but I'm trying to do it in a safer way. Yeah, there was definitely a camp of a few of them hiding in the trees. Alright, let's, let's do this, and let's just get ourselves back to the road, shall we? Alright, so level 18. I'm pretty sure this is the level where the shaman met his fate. If we can get to level 19, then I believe this will be the highest level character that we've had in the hardcore runs. Which is pretty exciting. I'm excited. It feels good. We haven't, we haven't met too much adversity on this run so far. Thanks to all the level, the zone hopping we did. I always want to call it level hopping. Like levels of a game. The, we started early. We went into the Valley of Trials after doing Death Knell, and I feel like that was pretty good. I don't know if it was necessary, but I felt good about it. It got us going in Duratar so that when we came there to quest more, we'd already kind of 
dipped our toes in a little bit into Senjin Village and whatnot. Alright, we will go... Well, wait, are we turning this in here? Where does this turn in? It says it turns in back here. I, we're just not seeing it on the map. I see it on the mini-map now. Let's turn it in first, and then we'll head south, and we'll get the crate from the Dalaran Wizards. Alright, yep, we got them all, buddy. There we go. Ergos Folly Part X. It will indeed take me longer than I had thought to uncover the dark secrets behind the enchantments Aragal was using. But in the meantime, I need you to take care of a slight problem our Dark Stalkers have discovered. It seems that Aragal let his magic spread to the Deep Elm Mine in the hills to the southeast. The mine would prove to be quite a resource for Verimothris' advance. I want you to behead the tainted foreman of the mine, Grims in the Pale. With his death, the mine shall be ours. No what level is that? And Aragal must die. Yes. Victory for we, I will try to do a Shadowfin Keep run. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to because we are in this guild that is not linked. What is the key command to get right into the guild tab? Is it J? No. I thought there was a, a letter that would get us right into guild, but apparently not. Anyway, there's not usually as many people online. The guild is no longer linked to the other hardcore guilds, which I just ended up with the luck of uh, being left behind after the scramble. I'm not sure what happened, but it's probably going to make it harder on this character for us to look for groups. I'll probably do some looking in general chat. Decrepit Fairy 16. We, yeah, we need to head down to do border crossing first. Um, no. There we go, there it is. And th there's not a lot of people leveling in Silver Pine. I feel like most people level up in the Barrens. I don't, I don't, for some reason, it doesn't seem like there are lots of people ever leveling up in Silver Pine. Although I guess eventually, you know how like the lower levels are always really, really populated, right? I guess eventually it's not going to be like that because as we gain in levels, there's going to be less and less people whose characters make it that far. So it might start to be a little bit of a lonely road after a while, you know what I mean? Which is kind of a unique feeling of its own. And that way when we do come across people at higher levels, it, it's going to be quite something because we, we know what they've been through to make it that far. good idea to fight our way in from here. They're gonna cast at us, so I, I doubt they're even gonna move very much. Yeah, here we go.
can you shoot through your tent? The answer is yes. Yes, they can shoot through their tents. Very easily can they shoot through their tents. Oh, he took off. There we go. Um, oh, good, 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 good. Glad I didn't pull that other guy. Casters still scare me a little bit. Too many casters on us. And they're going to burn our bubble really, really, really fast. Especially before we have any points in improved power word shield. You make, you quickly remove the pendant from the crate and replace the lid. Okay, so we found the pendant. Is there anything else we want to do down here? Uh, that's too high of a level. Pyrewood ambush is elite. Aragal must die. Is a dungeon. Aragal's folly. Grimson, yeah, let's... Let's head up to the north and try to do that one. That one is also a green quest. Now the question is, will I be able to find the entrance into this place? I can't remember if this is the one that always causes me some issues. I feel like it is. I think I see the way right back here, actually. Maybe coming from this direction was smart. Some Moon Rage Gluttons down here. I'm just going to clear all these guys out so there's no question about our ability to retreat if we need to.
let's grab him while he's out here. Making it easier for us. That way he won't be pathing around inside the mine itself. Some of these guys are level 12, I have to be careful with how much mana I'm using on them. We are not proccing spirit tap off those guys. Like this one here. Let's just wand him down. Interesting musical change. Well, this is going to be interesting. These guys are packed in here pretty tightly, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we have a, a few levels on them. I think we're going to have to deal with at least one more two-pull. I'm kind of worried about a three-pull with Crimson back there and the two guys ahead of him. That would suck. I mean, we could probably deal with it, but... Maybe we could pull this guy on his own. Let's try it. No. We can't pull him on his own, but the good news is it didn't pull Grimson. Alright, uh, do we need to heal? Probably.
right, there we go, the head of Grims in the Pale. Let's go ahead and hearth back to the Sepulchre, we'll get these turned in, and then I actually want to head over to the Undercity. I want to level up Tailoring, and I want to learn our level 18 abilities. Ah, uh, possibly they both turn in down below. Possibly none of them turn in down here, and they turn in inside of other buildings. Speak quickly. Find the Deathstalker's Adamant and Deathstalker Vincent. This is Shadow Bank Keep. Okay. Come. I am forsaken. Take the pendant to Dalar Dawnweaver. Perhaps he can shed some light on the wizard's Watch plans. He's right over here, 12 feet away. I'm listening. Interesting. More machinations of the Kirin Tor, it would seem. This is a powerful artifact. It was used frequently by powerful wizards of the Kirin Tor to channel magical energies. That they are delivering so many to Ambermill indicates that they must be undergoing a project of some magnitude. I will see if I can pierce their shields and ascertain their intent. Of course, how could I have forgotten? Ambermill was one of the sites earmarked by the Kirin Tor, noted because it houses a dormant lay energy node. The wizards must be planning to reactivate the node and use its energies for some greater purpose. We cannot allow this to happen. It will take a great amount of power to activate the area's lay energies. We can stall them by taking the pendants away from the wizards. Our time will come. Okay. Most excellent, the mine will provide superb resources for our forces as we spread throughout Silverpine and into Azeroth. As my understanding of Ergil's magic grows, so does my disdain for the hapless fool. I am close to completing my research on his so-called remedy. My knowledge will be complete when I learn what enchantment is, is causing the strange behavior in Pyrewood Village. Look at how this is a wand from this quest, and look how much it sucks compared to the wand that we have. 11 to 22 fire damage. We deal 22 to 41 arcane damage. 11.8 DPS, we have 17.5 DPS. So, yeah, I don't think we'll do this quest, but we'll take it, and maybe we can come back at a much higher level to get it done. That's really the only thing I can think what of. Is it? Ill news you bring, Rambles. If Dalar is correct, and I've no reason to believe he isn't, we must move quickly. I must confer with him on our plan of attack, but in the meanwhile, we have to delay their progress. Dalar is attempting to locate the source of the wizard's spellcasting. For now, we'll have to slow their progress in any way we can. The conjurers, mages, and protectors are no doubt carrying pendants. Remove and retrieve them. Trust no one. What level is that? Uh, level 16. Okay, yep, we are headed back to Undercity. We're going to go to Undercity, and then we're going to do stuff there, and we have to head back to the Barrens, because we have a couple of things in the Barrens that have gone green, including Samaflange, which is pretty low level. Hello. And we have to decide if we're going to do that one or lose it pretty Victory. soon, before we hit level 19. I did make a bunch of linen bolts before I, I kicked things off. I don't know how many we have. Oh, we have quite a few. Yeah, we have about 30. So we should be able to do some work on our tailoring and actually kind of get that going. We never began Chen's Empty Keg quest. That was an oversight.
And I think the priest trainers, they are back in the war quarter. And then the tailoring guys are over in the mage quarter, as you would expect. Okay, so we can dispel magic. Dispels magic on the target, removing one harmful spell. Okay, so if we have a harmful magical effect on us. Power word shield rank 3, definitely, definitely need that. And shadow word pain rank 3, so yeah, definitely a big level Trust for us. No Let's see, so power word shield, we're going from absorbing 94 damage to absorbing 158 damage, so pretty huge. And then Shadow Word Pain, we're going from 66 shadow damage over 18 seconds to 132 damage over 18 seconds. So some pretty big boosts. Uh, and that was all we had. Dispel Magic we'll pull out over here. Okay, that seems pretty good. Let's head over into the Magic Quarter. We probably need to train skinning as well. Let's find the skinning trainer. Now we have it marked somewhere on the map, down here in the rogues quarter. Okay, so we'll make a little circuit. Because yeah, we are we are maxed out, guys. We're, we're maxed out on everything. It's not a good place to be. <laughs> we, we probably have, I haven't really been paying much attention, but I'm 100% positive we've been missing skill ups today at least. So we're going to take care of that and hopefully it will not let that happen again. Uh, there are some tailors over here we could visit. I think we have to visit the expert trainer Hello. to learn the next rank. There we go. Okay, we don't seem to have any what would you ask? any patterns to learn right now. We can make seven boots. Oh, see, here we go. See, this is something that we need light leather. We would not be able to make those if we didn't have the leather for it. Is there anything else that is less materials? This only takes three bolts, four bolts. That's a wool cape. Four, four. This is going to be our best bet. We have the leather to do this, so we, we might as well. I'm just trying to level up at this point and get skill ups. And these boots are going to be better than what we have, so we can actually equip a pair of these boots. Which we can't do while we're crafting. We have more bolts of linen cloth. We need some more coarse thread. Let's just check and see if anything opened I'm up at 80. Listening. Okay. A woolen bag. Yeah, see, this is what we need. We don't have wool. <laughs> we have no wool. As soon as we have wool, we're gonna be we're gonna be gearing up with some eight-slot bags. That's gonna be pretty huge. Uh, soft linen boots. We need fine thread and we can make these. These have some stats on them. Definitely, definitely something we need. What now? Um, what now is we need fine thread. 
go ahead and make one of those. Let's sell some stuff out of our inventory while we're here. Gonna hold on to the leather for now. Okay, now we can't do much more. Let's just make two more of the linen boots. Actually, let's do this. I should be doing this instead. Reinforced linen cape only took two, so I, I, I was not efficient there, and we probably missed some skill ups. Sorry about that. Goodbye. All right, eighty six. You are. All right, learning some wool stuff. There we go. So yeah, we just need to uh, start getting some wool together. And we can make those eight slot bags, that's going to be pretty huge. Let's head down into the rogue quarter and let's train the next rank of skinning as well. I am forsaken. We are going to head back over to the Barrens. So we are heading out to the Zeppelin. Somebody pointed out that you can fall from the top of the elevator accidentally and die. Uh, I haven't done that in a long, long time. And I feel like the last time I did it was like a long time ago and it was like kind of intentionally to see if it could happen. So I don't really think we have to worry too much about that under normal play. Although a couple of you guys have said you've died that way. I don't know if you meant that you died that way in a hardcore run. That would be unfortunate. I hope it was just like a random thing that happened to you while not in a hardcore run. The good news is we didn't see either Zeppelin up, so maybe we'll get lucky and they'll be headed there soon. I wouldn't mind some Zeppelin teleports for just the sake of, uh, you know, being respectable of player time. The Zeppelins are fine. We had a long time in the game realistically waiting for Zeppelins. I would I would love for one of these goblins just to teleport us over to Duratar. We can just say we took the Zeppelin, right? Use your imagination, kids. 
Time is money, friend. We, we don't have to actually take the zeppelin every time. <laughs> I could help. So yeah, uh, we'll see the Gromgol zep come in first, I think. So it could be a little while. So when we go into improved power word shield, that's going to increase the damage absorption by our shield by a total of 15% once we put three points into it. Night Plague the Warlock, dead at level 13 in the Barrens. Rip, my friend. Warlocks are tough. Your pet can get you into trouble. That's what happened to us. Our, our pet pulled one extra guy, which caused us to fight, and pull another guy, and then we died. It was like bad pathing down a hill. He went down the left side of the hill instead of going down like straight or the right side, and that's that's how he pulled somebody. One day we're going to try the Warlock again, but to be honest, it, it's not really something I'm looking forward to trying, because it was tough to get going. It was really tough to get to a point where we got the Voidwalker. We got the Voidwalker, and I felt so powerful, and then we got killed. <laughs> it was uh, a very rude awakening. That character died twice. I thought for sure after the first death that we would, uh, we'd be able to go far, but that didn't happen. See, the Zeps are not coming. <laughs> Here's the Gromgol Zep finally coming in. Which means that we have a minute before the uh, Orgrimmar Zeppelin comes in. Never really look a lot at the Holy Tree. Improved Renew would be good just to, to have it. I don't think it's worth coming in here and spending points, though. Reduce all spell damage taken would be amazing for dealing with casters. Holy Nova. Useless, but fun. Yeah, the only things that I would, I'd really like out of this tree, Improved Renew would be great, just for that healing. That instant cast healing. And then maybe spell warding. I just don't think it's worth coming into the tree to get that. We need to get down into into the discipline tree. We need to at least get down into mental strength. Oh, uh, no, we need force of will. I don't know if we need power infusion or not. I might save that point. Granted, it's only one point, but it might be better spent somewhere else as a, as a solo run. I always forget to use cooldowns like that on, on casters, so... What are we missing out on in the Shadow Tree? Uh, the Resistance would be good. Improved Shadow Word Pain would be good. Just increases the duration. I don't know if that increases the damage, though. That's interesting. Threat Generator we don't care about. Improved Psychic Extreme I don't care about. Silence would be nice to have. It would be nice to have a Silence. That's, that's fair. Improved Mind Blast would be great. We would, like, reduce the cooldown of Mind Blast by a lot. Ah, uh, not having Mind Flay. Mind Flay slows them down as they get to you. We'd have to spend 10, 5, 6 more points here. Yeah, that's a tough one. Hmm. Hmm. I kind of wish Mindfully was a baseline spell we got access to. <laughs> it's a fun spell. I like that it slows them as they run in. With Improved Power Word Shield, we don't need the slowing. It's kind of an either or. So if you go Shadow, your shields aren't as strong. So slowing the enemy down as they run to you is really useful. Uh, on Discipline, we don't really need to do that. They can hit us a lot and it's not going to get through the shields as easily. But the idea of a build that has both improved shields and mind flay, that's an interesting idea for a build. You'd be sacrificing a lot of later level talents to be able to pull it off, but I don't know, maybe it might be worth it.
Hunters and warriors today. Hunters and warriors. Lots of hunters, man. Lots of warriors. So many warriors. It's really hilarious because when you ask anybody, basically almost anybody, what's the hardest class to succeed at long term in hardcore? Most people will say warrior, and then you look at how many people start up a warrior, and it's like the overwhelming majority of people do attempt warrior, even though it's, uh, it's hard. Alright, guys, I think I'm going to end the video here for now. I'm going to take a little bit of a break, and when we come back, we will be flying over to the crossroads. We're going to go north, I believe, and hit up the Samaflange. Then we will scoot over to the west from there and deal with the Harpy Raiders. Somewhere along the way we'll get Prowlers. Uh, Shen's keg just needs to go to Ratchet to get the follow-up. So that is what we will be doing next time, guys. Thank you all very much for joining me today. Hope you're all having a great time with the Priest. I certainly am. And I would love to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think. And until next time, take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we'll see you back here again very soon. Bye for now.